everyone! Welcome to the first episode of Tales of Mythology, where we take a look at myths, stories, and legends from culture, and then break them down to look at their origins and their modern relevance in today's culture. Today's episode will be focused on the classic fable, The Tortoise and the Hare. In case you're not familiar with the story, here's a quick recap. The story features a tortoise and a rabbit who decide to compete in a race together. With turtles being generally considered slow animals and rabbits being considered quick animals, it is easily assumed that the rabbit will beat the tortoise. The rabbit is aware of this fact and becomes rather cocky of his victory, giving himself sort of a slacker's mentality, or not wanting to try his hardest in the race due to being so sure of himself. The tortoise, on the other hand, is determined to try his best to win the race, despite the odds being against him, and puts in as much effort as possible. During the race, the rabbit takes an enormous lead and decides to take a nap, since he is so certain that the tortoise will never catch up with him. In the end, however, the rabbit sleeps too long, and the tortoise has gained significant ground on the rabbit, as the tortoise never took a break and kept moving, even while the rabbit was sleeping. The rabbit tries to catch up and win, but is too late. The slower-moving tortoise has won, and we are left with the lesson of slow and steady wins the race, often at the end of the story. And that's how the story typically goes. But where did it come from, and who wrote it first? As some of you will know, the tortoise and the hare comes from a collection of fables that are known as Aesop's fables. Aesop was a slave in ancient Greece, or so it is said. Not a lot is actually known about Aesop, and some even doubt whether he may have existed at all. It is believed, though, if he did exist, then he likely lived between 620 BCE to 560 BCE. As mentioned, Aesop was said to be a slave who belonged to a master named Xanthus. The first known collection of Aesop's fables was produced in the 4th century BCE. It is also likely that Aesop himself never wrote these fables down, but transmitted them orally, or by speaking them. It is also believed that some of the stories are older than Aesop and were passed down to him. So that was the background behind Aesop. But why did he tell these fables? What do they mean? What was their purpose? Well, for those who don't know, a fable is a short story that conveys a moral, also often featuring animals. Now, we return to the tortoise and the hare. The final words we are left with, slow and steady wins the race, can be interpreted as determination will carry you to victory. The tortoise puts effort into the race, and so he is therefore rewarded for his hard work. In comparison, the rabbit is a procrastinator. He doesn't put a lot of effort towards the race. He slacks off and then rushes to get things done at the last minute. Because of this, the hare is not rewarded for his actions, and he loses the race. Overall, the idea of the story is to teach children not to be lazy, and that hard work pays off. This goes for all of Aesop's fables, where the idea is for the stories to inspire children to be better as they grow and eventually transition into adulthood. A great example of the lesson of the tortoise and the hare for the modern day would be prepping for a school paper. Ultimately, a good paper will have time, effort, and thought put into it. It will be planned out and have plenty of research behind it. The opposite of this is someone who slacks off and doesn't think about the paper too much and then rushes to get it in, possibly having faulty sources as well. This person is not likely to get a grade as good as the person who put in all the time and effort. So now we know the story of the tortoise and the hare and what it means, at least to most people. Naturally, over time and being told over and over again, it could be expected to be reinterpreted and told differently by different people depending on where and when, considering how old the story is and how long it's been around. Let's take a look at some of those different interpretations, why don't we? In a version of the story written in 1915, the other animals spectate the race and root for the tortoise because they know that his deterministic lifestyle is more reliable than that of the hare. A twist is even added to this story where a forest fire wipes out all but a few survivors who witness the race. The tortoise was selected by the animals as the messenger to warn everyone else in the forest about the fire, as he was the most reliable. 
This version of the story further adds to the idea of hard work and determination being a trait that leads to success. Another version written by George Murray in 1891 actually flips the script and the hare catches up to the tortoise at the very end right after waking up and manages to beat the tortoise by, well, a hare. This adds a more cynical take to the moral, suggesting that everyone has a way of getting things done, even procrastinators as they rush at the end. This leaves you with the idea of, well, as long as you can get things done, it's done and nothing else matters. Pretty different, aren't they? But there may be even other versions that you wouldn't even associate with the story of the tortoise and the hare, specifically more modern interpretations seen in film and television. A notable adaptation of the fable comes in the form of the classic Looney Tunes short film, Tortoise Beats Hare, from 1941. In this animated short, Bugs Bunny appears during the opening credits, reading them aloud, and mispronouncing most of the names at that. After reading the title, however, Bugs is infuriated with the idea of a tortoise beating a hare. It is after this moment that Cecil Turtle appears, and the two agree to bet money racing against each other taking on the roles from the fable. What goes differently in this retelling of the story is that Cecil, taking the role of the tortoise, decides to cheat in the race by calling up his family members, who look identical to him, to come up and hide along certain points of the racetracks, making it look like that whenever Bugs passes them, Bugs thinks he passed by Cecil. Every time this happens, Bugs thinks that Cecil somehow managed to get ahead of him earlier without him realizing it. After all his confusion, Bugs frantically reaches the finish line, only to find Cecil waiting for him there. He then takes the winnings and splits the money amongst him and the other turtles. I wonder if I've been tricked. Nah, it's a possibility. This adaptation of the story paints the tortoise in a completely different light. In contrast to previous versions, where the tortoise is depicted as honest, hardworking, and determined, here, as portrayed by Cecil Turtle, the tortoise is a cheat and a con man. Cecil at no point tries to honestly outrun Bugs and instead just resorts to tricking him to take the money at the end. If there were a moral to be gained from the tortoise here, or Cecil in this case, it would likely be that those who are most clever come out on top, which is not necessarily a positive message considering what Cecil does, but it is something to take away, nevertheless. Bugs as the hare comes across as a victim rather than a procrastinator. Him losing the race is ultimately not his fault, and he never decides to ignore his task and take a break. The hare now has the role of the tortoise as being determined to win the race to prove the title of the cartoon wrong. Another adaptation, though more subversive, is the television episode of SpongeBob SquarePants titled Neptune Spatula, which aired on April 1st, 2000. In this episode of the show, as some may know, there is no tortoise or hare. Despite this, however, the episode retains a lot of the moral narrative from the fable. To catch anyone up to speed who has not seen Neptune's spatula, here is a recap. SpongeBob and his friend Patrick visit the Fry Cook Museum, where they find on display a golden spatula stuck in ancient Greece, where it is said that only a fry cook who is worthy of serving King Neptune can pull it. SpongeBob is able to do so, being the best fry cook in Bikini Bottom. But when King Neptune arrives to greet the wielder of the spatula, he refuses to believe SpongeBob could be worthy, so he is challenged to a competition. It is at this point in the episode where the similarities to the fable start to occur. The competition is for SpongeBob and Neptune to face off in a race to cook the most Krabby Patty burgers in a set amount of time. This is similar to that of the race of the tortoise and the hare. The results of the race have Neptune winning, who produces several patties through magic, and SpongeBob losing, who only produces one handmade patty. Despite this, everyone who tries Neptune's patties are disgusted, claiming his are no good. Neptune, however, tries SpongeBob's patty and loves it deciding Spongebob is the true winner. Ultimately, the message of this episode parallels that of the tortoise and the hare, such as, despite Spongebob being slower, he is rewarded for taking his time and putting in his best work to make the patty taste great, which parallels that of the tortoise, 
who worked really hard to make it to the finish line at the end of the story. Neptune, on the other hand, parallels the hair, using magic to try and take the easy way out of beating SpongeBob effortlessly, much like the hare, who in the fable didn't put much effort into the race and instead decided to sleep for a bit. Ultimately, at the end, we are shown yet again that hard work pays off. And that's a wrap on the first episode of Tales of Mythology, The Tortoise and the Hare. Hope you guys learned something, and I hope you have a good day, and I hope to see you next time.